falcon in the trees, bobcat in the grasses. The hermit took us through the orchard to see the white pomegranate. I asked when they'd be ripe. In the fall, past us, I thought. If the band leader cared, it didn't show. Though he liked the hermit, or the idea of the hermit, how much do you think, how much did a hermit cost all through dinner? And how we couldn't take the pomegranates home? I asked if they'd get red, and the hermit said, no, they'd stay like this. I asked, are they sweet? Sweeter? Then deeper? Into the orchard until I couldn't see the band leader anymore. Just green everywhere, and the hermit's straw hat, like the grasses on the ranch we stayed at. Not gold, but I can't say. Something like gold. I followed him in deeper, not missing the band leader at all. He said, Autumn's good. And I said, you mean better? All the greens around us like stars, the way they shimmered, almost wet with the sun, but not. No, not better, but good. I felt a little sick in the green, like right before the school play starts. Everyone huddled in the wings, not ger nervous, just too close. I said, I saw a bobcat in the grasses last night. To steady myself, I touched the trunk, which was cooler. Mulberry, he said. That's mulberry. Ignoring the bobcat, which the band leader hadn't believed. You didn't see a bobcat. I did. I know it was a bobcat. There's bobcat round here, the hermit said, and put a berry in my hand. The band leader walking up to lean down and take it in his mouth. I like it when he touches me there, right above the forehead with his whole palm and moves his hand along my skull until it rests below my neck and sort of holds me there. And how we stay like that before it even starts, right there in the stillness, like the best part of the movie, when the lights go down and everyone sort of shakes together and relaxes. I like to watch him start to want things, right before he tells me what he wants, how he wants it, or before he sighs and says my name like a surprise and starts to move his hips, and how he asks me how I do it, oh God, right there, like that, in the stillness. He sounds just like a girl, just like I sound when we come together, then relax. I like it when his hand tightens on my skull, right at the place my neck begins. He says, sorry, he didn't mean to hold so tight, and I say it's fine. I like it when you hold me like that. He's huge. Standing there in the woods where I didn't even see him at first, he doesn't know I'm looking and then he moves a little bit and kicks the ground. I was walking by myself at sunset. I kept going deeper into the greenest spot until I found a clearing. He was the clearing. He took the clearing up and stood there and watched me till I saw him. I saw his shoulders first and then his neck. I think he was so golden in the sun I didn't know what he was. And I thought the branches were his horns. And I thought he was an eight-point stag. And how his chest made a kind of giant heart out of me, out of my eyes looking. And he let me look. He stood there in the green not moving. I thought his horns were leaves. I saw eight branches coming from his head. He didn't stop my looking. He didn't run away. I watched the whole of him. I watched his arms and the taper of his legs. He let me watch him for maybe hours, but really moments, like a gift, like when you're almost home and smell them cooking supper, but you're still outside and could just turn back around. We stood like that together. He let me touch the whole of him, every rise and muscle. He let me rest on the hollow of his neck and breathe it in for four whole breaths. He said my name, or he shook his head inside the leaves and sighed and let the light come into us. He let the light come into us. I try to feel it. He says, just breathe. I breathe in, I try to feel it. He says, it's not so hard, just smile a bit. I try, it's a problem. He says, you have a problem with joy. 
and he's right. I have a problem with joy. It makes no sense to him. I mean, we're here in the mountains. We're here hours from town. He says, you said you needed to get away. I try. I try to feel it. Last night we went for a walk. I tried to feel it. He said, tell me about stars, Pasadena. Sometimes he calls me that. I try to think it's funny. I said, you've never even been to Pasadena. It made him sullen. He said, why the fuck did we come? I said, I'd try. We're hours from town. I just need to get away. We try. He says, Pasadena, you're a fucking drag. I say, don't call me that. You've ever, never even been there. He says, it's a nickname. You said you want it to be different. It's true. I want it to be different. Before we left, I found him in the pool. I breathed in and watched him with the girls till he looked up and said, come here. I tried. I made it down the steps, just as Jasper surfaced. I said, I need to get away. Jasper said, this isn't Pasadena. I know. I wasn't even mad. We've shared all sorts of things, and he's right. Everything's worth a try. Before we left, I found him in the pool. I said, I need to get away. Just as Jasper surfaced, I breathed in. I thought, you are not in Pasadena. I wasn't even mad. Everything's worth a try. He said, it's not so hard. Just smile a bit. He said, you say you want it to be different. I tried to feel it. I make no sense to him. He said, just breathe. And he's right. Tell me about the stars. You've never been to Pasadena. Marie, just one more. You can hold a duck down on a rock and cut its head off. You can hold a snake down on a rock and cut it in half and watch it keep lunging. You can cut a lizard like a green bean on a rock, and it'll turn a little green, and then it'll turn black, and the cats will come eat it. You can catch the cat and hold it down and cut its head off, but it'll be harder because it knows you're coming, and you'll have to know it knows you're coming, and so it'll struggle, so you'll have to not care anymore. You can kill it, though, if you just let yourself get loose and double. That's what Tommy says. He says, get loose and double, Pasadena, meaning let one part of you go and let the other break its head with the stone you brought, or maybe just get mad enough to crush its skull and let it lie there for a minute, like a rag, no other way to say it, like a rag. You can hold a monkey down and bash its skull in. You can look into its eyes and see it smile that smile at you that's not a smile and hear it hissing. You can feel its finger grab your wrist, but you can do it. You can. You can look him in the eye until it gets so still and th stops thrashing. People back home say you can't. They say it will never stop fighting, but everything stops fighting if you look at it right. That's what I told you. I said, I can't fight him anymore. And you said, yes, you can. And now I can, but that's because I'd know what to do, because I'd leave my body right beside me and slam his head down on the rock. Thank you so much.